The next rule that we're going to look at is called the quotient rule. And this is where we have a fraction. So we would like to take the derivative when we have a fraction. So I have a function of x divided by another function of x. In this case, if I want to take the derivative of a fraction, then we are going to write down the denominator as is times the derivative of the numerator minus. This is really important that you put a minus. If you put a plus, then everything after that um, will be wrong. So be careful. Um, times the numerator and then times the derivative of the denominator. So it's the denominator. So we start with the bottom function. So it's the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the original denominator raised to the power of 2. So it's all over the square of the denominator. Right here I have it written out in words as well. It's really important that we have this memorized. I'm going to assume after this section that you know um, how to use the quotient rule. All right. So as we go through this section, pay special attention to um, the, the rule that we're using, the formula here, and make sure that you have it memorized. And make sure that you're also paying attention to how things simplify. Okay. So for example, 5. Notice that in the numerator, we actually do not have a variable. Okay, there are a couple of different ways that you can go about solving this. In the next section, we'll talk about maybe an easier way to solve this problem. But 3 can still be considered a constant function of x. We want to be really careful, though, about the fact that that's a constant. Okay, so we're going to take the derivative. It's actually, it actually is going to make the problem easier, but we just want to be careful that it doesn't somehow seem too easy. Okay, so we're going to take the derivative. I'm going to write g prime of x equals. We start with the denominator. So my denominator is 10x plus 8. We write down the denominator as is. I'm going to put that in the parentheses because it has more than one term. And then here's our numerator. It's just 3 times the derivative of the numerator. Okay, now here's where sometimes people get tripped up because it's almost too easy. What is the derivative of a constant? A derivative of a constant is zero. Okay, make sure that you're careful that we remember that rule from the previous section. So we get zero minus. Now we're looking for the numerator as is. So this is where we write down three. This is the numerator as is. Times the derivative of the denominator. Okay, so just what's the derivative of what's in that red box. Okay, so we have two terms. We're going to use the power rule. Um, the derivative of 10x is just 10. The derivative of 8 is 0, so it's 10 plus 0, which is just 10. All of this gets divided by the denominator, as is, squared. So we're going to just put that in parentheses, and I'm going to raise all of that to the power of 2. Okay, so let's go back through. This is the denominator, as is times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator being raised to the power of 2. Right. Now, if you stop there, then you would be correct. Okay. Um, I would like to simplify this because there's something really nice about the way this simplifies. Be really careful. Okay, what is anything times zero? Zero times any other number is zero. It doesn't matter what the other number is. For some reason, when it's in this context, people want to say 10x plus 8 times zero is 10x plus 8. Remember that we are multiplying here. Okay, don't make this harder. 10x plus 8 times zero, anything times zero is zero. So that's all zero. Minus. Now when I do the multiplication here, 3 times 10 is 30, all over the denominator squared. We usually do not actually square out the denominator. We usually simplify the numerator as much as we can, and we usually leave the denominator 
as that squared. So 0 minus 30. Now I'm subtracting. 0 take away 30, that's just negative 30. Okay, now there I'm subtracting, I'm not multiplying, so that's okay, all over that denominator squared. Okay, so be really careful about your simplification here. I promise you I will ask you a question like this on another exam. And I like to give this problem because it requires that you know the quotient rule, but it simplifies very easily if you know what you're doing. So make sure that you're careful. Don't let zero make the problem harder. Zero times anything else is zero, and it simplifies very nicely. Okay, so I like that problem, so be careful here. All right, um, so the next example, we're going to find a derivative. We notice that we have this time a little bit more interesting numerator and denominator. So here's my numerator, and then we're dividing by another little mini function of x in our denominator. So we're going to take the derivative, so f prime of x, and I'm going to be looking for that notation. So it tells me that it's different than the original function that we started with. So we're going to start with our denominator, as is. So x squared plus 11, I'm going to put that in the parentheses, times the derivative of the numerator. Okay, what's the derivative of x cubed minus 3? It would be 3x squared uh, minus 0, so just 3x squared, minus. Really important, if you're dividing, so notice I have this line here, then I have this line here. Dividing means subtracting. Seems small, but it's really important for future problems. So let's write out what we have so far. Denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator as is times the derivative of the denominator. So what's the derivative of what's in that red box? That's going to be 2x plus 0, but of course 2x plus 0 is just 2x. All of this divided by the denominator as is but then we're going to raise that to the power of 2. So I'm going to put that in parentheses and then I'm going to square it. The parentheses are important here because we're squaring the, that entire quantity, not just the 11. All right, and if you wish to simplify, then you could do that. Let's practice with a little bit of simplification here. Okay, if you were to stop right there, then that would be the derivative. We would be fine. You would get full credit. Just going to practice a little bit of simplification. We have to do the multiplication first on either side of the minus sign, and then we could do the subtraction. I think it's helpful in this case, especially with the subtraction, to maybe rewrite in a little bit more familiar way. Okay, so I'm just going to do that first, and then we'll do the distribution. So instead of having 3x squared behind x squared plus 11, Usually we like to think of it as the monomial, the one term factor in front of the group. Okay, minus, I'm going to put the 2x in front, and then I'm going to write the group x cubed minus 3 behind it, all over that denominator squared. I think this helps a little bit more with the visual, visualization of what we're actually distributing. Now I'm going to actually do the multiplication. So I'm going to distribute 3x squared times x squared is 3x to the fourth. Uh, 11 times 3x squared is 33x squared. Now here I'm distributing both the negative and the 2x at the same time. So I get negative 2x to the fourth and then a positive 6x all over that denominator squared. And once again, I'm going to leave the denominator as the denominator squared. Um, in future problems, it's going to be uh, a little bit nicer to have our numerator simplified, and we're not so concerned about our denominator. We ran out a little, a little bit of room there, but that's okay. So in the denominator, we have x squared plus 11 squared. I'm going to leave that just like that. In the numerator now, we can combine our like terms. 3x to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth is just x to the fourth. Um, plus 33x squared, no like terms for that, and then plus 6. So if I would like to simplify, then this is what I would get. Okay, remember that this is perfectly fine if you stopped there. We have our derivative. Um, good practice to see how this would simplify. If I wanted to make my numerator look as nice as possible. All right. 
All right, two more examples, and then we'll look at some application problems. Um, what do you think the first thing is that we're going to do with example seven before we start to take the derivative? Okay. So if you said rewrite, you are correct. And why are we rewriting? Well, we are rewriting because we have square root of x. And I'm going to write that as x to the one-half power. So remember, anytime we have radicals, the first thing we want to do is rewrite all radicals as exponents. Now, I could choose to bring that x squared, x to the one-half power, I'm sorry, x to the one-half power to the top, um, and then solve it the way that we did in the last section. However, now we know that if we have a fraction, we can actually s take the derivative using the quotient rule. So let's do that. All right, so we're going to kind of put into our boxes here the numerator in green, my denominator in red, and then we'll go for it. So it's the denominator as is times the derivative of the numerator. So what's the derivative of the green box? That would be 2x minus the numerator as is times the derivative of the denominator. So be careful there. We have a fraction. Uh, we're going to multiply the power to the front. So that's 1 half times x. And then we're going to subtract 1 from that power, which gives me negative 1 half. Okay, be careful that we don't forget about the denominator squared. So all over one, x to the 1 half power, and then we're going to square that. All right, and I'm going to choose to stop right there. That represents the derivative. All right, um, in example 8, we're going to do the same thing. We just happen to have three terms in our denominator this time. So I'm going to put my numerator in this green box, put my denominator in the red box here. So we have a little mini function of x at the top, the little mini function of x at the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to notate that I'm taking the derivative here. So that would be the denominator as is. So I'm going to write down 4x squared plus 11x plus 10 in parentheses. Parentheses are important especially for later on and when we do simplifying, uh, times the derivative of the numerator. The derivative of x plus 1, okay, um, that's just 1. That's pretty nice, pretty easy. Don't make it harder than it is. Minus the numerator as is, so that's x plus 1, times the derivative of the denominator. So what's the derivative of what's in the red box? Remember, we're using the power rule. So that would be 8x to the power of 1 plus 11, and then the derivative of 10. That's a constant term. The derivative of that constant term is 0. So uh, 8x plus 11 is the derivative of our denominator. All of this divided by the denominator as is. And we're going to put that in parentheses, and we're going to square it. Okay, So this represents the derivative using that quotient rule. If you wish to simplify, we could do that very easily. Let's go ahead and practice that really quickly here. Um, pretty easy for the first one. If we do the multiplication, that's denominator times 1. So that's just the denominator. Okay, we have a minus sign in front of two terms, two factors multiplied together. You would have to FOIL those two terms. Let's do that. First times the first, outer times the outer, inner times the inner, I would get plus 19x. And last times the last, I would get plus 11. The one thing that you want to be careful about is if you have a negative in front of a group of terms, the last thing that you would want to do there is to distribute that minus sign before you combine like terms. So if I wanted to distribute that minus sign, it would change the signs of everything in the parentheses. So I'm going to do this um, uh, just really easily and quickly, a little shortcut. So I'm going to say negative 
Applied to the first term would make the first term negative. Applied to the second term would also make the next term negative and would make this term negative as well. So the negative gets distributed and then combine like terms. So I would get um, negative 4x squared. So 4x squared minus 8x squared would be negative 4x squared. Um, 11x minus 19x would be negative 8x. 10 minus 11 gives me a minus 1 all over that denominator squared. So if I wish to simplify, then this is what the simplification would look like.